Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another charging site review. I'm here cruising uh, scenic California Highway 395 on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada. So I'm here at the Bridgeport Electrify America charging site. Now this is a site that I've actually been to before, before it was online. Uh, in fact, uh, when, <laughs> when I came here there was a BYD uh, electric bus that had to bring a generator along because this site hadn't been up yet and I'll be perfectly honest after having driven this northbound as well as southbound um, in an electric vehicle I'm actually impressed that the BYD bus made it as far as it did um, but it also kind of illustrates just how crucial this site is right now it's not that cold right it's in the high 20s low 30s over the passes coming through uh, there's still like frost and ice on the cables here, so it's it's chilly, but the sun is out, so it's it's warming up pretty quickly. Uh, but even in these sort of mild conditions for the Eastern Sierras, you're, you're looking at having to charge up to 70 to 80 percent between DC fast charging sites. Now from Reno down south, you have a smattering of other public charging options, level two chargers. There are a couple of EVgo chargers closer to Reno. There are a couple of the high, Caltrans Highway uh, 3030 chargers a little lower in the freeway. Uh, but this, these sites that Electrify America is making along Highway 395 are actually crucial for any um, non-Tesla EVs who want to make the trip up Highway 395 uh, in, a, in a fast way similar to what gasoline powered uh, travelers would, would do in their cars. So uh, these are absolutely crucial sites. Uh, this one features four ABB chargers, two 350 kilowatt chargers, two 150 kilowatt chargers, and a 50 kilowatt Chatamo head. So a pretty standard site uh, by Electrify America. Um, and, uh, but let's just uh, jump right into the site score. So in terms of access, uh, you, you know, you're right, you're right off of Highway 395, right? There's, there's nothing stopping you. You're at the back of a, a gas station. So you're not really competing for like retail traffic, anything like that. So in all of those cases, this is perfect, right? This is ideally located in the, you know, near the freeway or near the highway uh, at a location that's not typically overcrowded by people who are staying for a long time. Uh, so you're not competing for spaces, that sort of thing. So on all of those counts, this is a near perfect site in terms of access. The one big problem is, and again, I'm, I'm deducting two points on sites that I consider dedicated travel chargers. And this, I don't think you can consider it anything but a dedicated travel charger. It's a gas station basically in a very remote area. Uh, you know, I could zoom in over there on the traffic sign, I think. Uh, where is it? Yeah, there it is. Uh, I mean, Reno is over 100 miles away, and that's like the nearest town. No local residents are, are likely to be using uh, this charger. Uh, so this is really, this really is a dedicated travel charger site. And if you do not have full pull through parking available for longer format vehicles, um, I'm deducting two points. So this is only getting an eight points in terms of, in terms of access, right? If you, if you look at the gas stations, the gas, the gas pumps, right? All of them allow for full pull through parking. So, um, why, why is that lacking from, you know, a, an EV charging site? So eight out of 10 for access. Now in terms of amenities, right? What, yes, you have your travel amenities. Um, but you know, you can, br you know, bring your own lunch sort of thing. You can maybe pick something up from in town, come to the chargers, and then have a nice little picnic while your car is charging up. So I'm going to kind of give it a pass on that. Um, but the one thing, of course, we're in the Sierras. There's a, we get a lot of snow. And the, the sun isn't so much of a concern, uh, though it could be in summertime. But it's mostly snow, sleet, rain. No covering, right? There, there's no covering like you have for a majority of the gas pumps over there uh, to protect the chargers. These chargers, when I got here, luckily the cables were only covered in ice. 
only covered in ice, right? But imagine covered in snow, hard pack. It, it, it just, the, it's just too easy, in my opinion, uh, for Electrify America and other charging providers to just, just put basic covers. They actually showcased something at the LA Auto Show. Uh, I'll, I'll overlay some video there of, of basically just small solar panel arrays that just really protect the charger. Even if you're not going to protect the car, protect the chargers. And that, that, that would get enough. But for now, I'm only doing a 9 out of 10 for amenities because, uh, yeah, you have your travel stop amenities. You can just run over and grab a squeegee, whatever, run into the convenience store. Like I said, bring something over from an off-site and, and eat it here like a picnic, use the bathrooms, that sort of thing. So 9 out of 10 for amenities, but I'm not budging. We need some sort of covering to protect these chargers, protect the cables, and, you know, it'd be nice to also uh, protect the cars themselves too. In terms of site concentration, I've recently updated my scores. I know this is a less traveled route on, you know, Highway 395, but not really. Like during peak holiday times, um, seasonally, this can see very, very high travel. Um, four, four chargers is just the bare minimum, basic, five out of 10. Um, you know, it, I, I think a site like this really should have uh, at least six chargers. And of course, you look again to the gas station for inspiration. Yes, that's a diesel pump, but they have two separate char pumps that are in addition, right? They should have a full pull through option with 350 kilowatt charging here. Um, and they don't. And so it's only getting a five out of 10 for concentration, maybe just a couple more chargers here. Um, and that will make this a much more reliable stop, even though this is sort of in a remote area of Highway 395. And in terms of location, I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, you know, this is a 10 out of 10, easy, uh, no questions asked. You look at where you are in the Sierras, in the middle of nowhere. Like I said, I don't know that bridging the gap between the EVgo and Gardnerville um, and uh, you know Bishop would be possible without this charger unless you're going to do something like I think I did my last trip where I stopped at Mono, uh, Mono Lake at Levining um, and use a level 2 charger. This is a crucial charger. It is absolutely important that we have a charger. Uh, this location on Highway 395, it enables travel um, through the Sierras and like I said in inclement weather it becomes even more important so uh, you know no questions asked uh, 10 out of 10 for site location importance and then in terms of speed um, 350 kilowatt charging right so yeah there are two 150 kilowatt uh, CCS chargers and a 50 kilowatt Chatamo um, but yeah you cannot um, cannot beat 350 kilowatt charging right now for public public access chargers and really you can't beat it even with the private networks right 350 kilowatts is the fastest charging currently available for EV owners of any make any model um, and so yeah this gets an easy uh, 10 out of 10 uh, for speed basically there are only a few other networks right now offering 350 kilowatt charging you know uh, the GM funded EV Go sites are all 350 kilowatt chargers uh, uh, New York Evolve network is using 350 kilowatt chargers uh, but really that's it um, so it's it's Electrify America and just a few other and, and we're still waiting for those 600 so uh, GM funded EV Go sites to all start going online so in the meantime you want 350 kilowatt public Public charging uh, anywhere in the country or I guess what did they say they're up to 30 38 states now or something like that 36 38 states it's electrify America so easy 10 out of 10 all right so that brings us to a total site score of 10 out of 10 for speed 10 out of 10 for location that's 20 25 with the site concentration 34 with the uh, with the amenities and the, the lack of solar canopy and that brings us to a, a 42 out of 50 with the 8 out of 10 
for site access. So 42 out of 50, that's a, a basic solid B. Like I said, some of the, this is really low hanging fruit that Electrify America can easily correct uh, with adding a couple of chargers and maybe orienting them so they're full pull through, adding some basic covering to the chargers so that um, you know they, they're protected during winter, protected from the elements. Um, it would be nice to protect the, the EV owner's cars as well, uh, make it a little easier on their air conditioning systems during summer, um, You know, keep them out of the, the the snow and sleet and rain during winter um, and uh, yeah but but keeping those things in mind this is very close to an a site and a lot of that is largely due to the importance of this location and of course the fact that these are truly travel focused chargers in the terms of speed right uh, most EVs now uh, the newer EVs faster charging EVs a 20 to 30 to 40 minute stop is all you really need um, and and then the fastest charging EVs, a 15 to 20 minute stop is really all you're going to need on these 350 kilowatt chargers. So uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Have you had a chance to drive up Highway 395 through the Eastern Sierras? Have you had a chance to use the Bridgeport chargers here by Electrify America? What do you think of this site? And uh, you know, is it something that you're excited to use maybe in the future in your electric vehicle, maybe traveling through scenic uh, Eastern Sierras of uh, California? If you enjoyed this uh, site review, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.